Hello there, and welcome back to the Bad Batch series recap. Today we are season two, episode three, The Solitary Clone. Before we do get started, I just want to apologize and recap by saying that I said Cody was shot in the last episode. It was not Cody. It was Wilco. I'm very sorry for this, but that being said, it's time to get on to episode three. Let's get stuck in. We begin episode three with the stunning visuals of the planet Desix, a one separatist round planet, and we found out why later in the episode. The next scene we see is the Empire approaching to be what looks like the castle of the planet, well, whoever controls this crazy looking world besides. Now what is very interesting is we see a breed of early Ralph Macquarie like concept art for the Stormtroopers and it's so cool that like, threw that in there. But is this the end for the clone? Is the Are these the new Stormtroopers and the foot soldiers for the Empire? Who knows, maybe we'll find out. They then try to take over the planet by the order of the Galactic Empire, but the Governor Ames is having none of it, and she says that Desix does not fall under the Imperial system. Take your forces and leave peacefully, she remarks. The Empire then says that her appeal has been rejected. And now this is the crazy bit. This is, like, she says this is disappointing, and activates old Separatist droid army. The Clankers are back. So cool to see them. And wow, this felt like a Clone Wars episode, not a Bad Batch episode. It was so good. The Imperial Governor Groton is taken hostage along with the Stormtroopers. And then we get into the bones of the episode. We see what looks like Coruscant, and then we get it. There it is. Crosshair for the first time this season, but he is alone. In a private dorm for clones, you can see he's not happy, and he's indeed a solitary clone. He then makes his way to the base's cafeteria and we see two clones talking about the defense recruitment bill being up for a vote. They say that they hope it doesn't pass for their sake. Maybe is this what referring to the Empire's recruitment of people instead of using clones to start the stormtroopers. Crosshair then sits down and the clones move away. Nobody likes him. He tries to eat and then gets called to ramp out office. Now this is funny because it happens a couple of times every time he tries to eat. He gets called to the office. It happens at the start, it happens at the end, but we'll get to that afterwards. Rampart tells him that he's now medically clear for duty. And Rampart asks him how long he was on Camino before he was rescued from season one. And Crosshair replies it's 32 rotations, which I think is 32 days. Wow, that is a long time to stay stranded. And he still went back to the Empire. Like, it's mad. He's legitimately a soldier. And good soldiers follow orders. It's crazy that it keeps coming up, but it's so true. He then informs Crosshair of a mission to return the governor from Desix, but he is told that he's not capable of running his own team, and it will have to report in the morning to find out who he's working with. And then we get to the next bit, which is awesome. We go to a shot of Crosshair on his own. He looks like he's waiting for a bus. It's beautifully done. Like the way he looks alone and all the clone army are walking around him and everything. The way it comes across is just amazing. And then we hear it. Crosshair, it's Cody. Yes, Cody, who was the first clone to turn on Obi-Wan Kenobi during Order 66. And we have not seen this guy for years. Amazing to have an episode with him in. Let's go. Cody then informs Crosser that when he knew that he was available for duty, he requested him to be part of his squad. And that they, they have a back and forth about Clone Force 99, about them going rogue after Order 66. And that clones have been questioning the Order. Crosser then says that there are traitors, like the Jedi. And as he said this, Cody looks upset. Looks like he's regretting everything that he's ever done for that one split second. And we'll get more into that towards the end of the episode. They then head off on their mission, the Desix. When they are on approach, a reactivated tactical droid who is running the whole army spots them entering the atmosphere and tells the governor that they are in range. Ames says, let's welcome them. And boy, did he welcome them. Tanks, rockets, all things boom. They attack the Empire ship and down she goes. The clankers celebrate by saying, nice shot and have a high five. I love battle droids. I've missed them so much. Tactical droid then orders a sweep of the wreckage and that the battle droids report back with no survivors. When just out of the dust and the smoke, Cody and Crosshair open fire and take them out. There are survivors and they're going to have to take out the tank on the bridge to get to the tactical droid who is controlling the army. Crosshair does this by firing into the tank's cannon at the exact same time the droid opens fire. Boom, and the tank blows up off the bridge. More droids try to surround them, but Crosshair and Cody and the rest of the gang pick them off one by one. And it's a fantastic action scene. Guys, 
I'm not doing it justice. Please watch this episode. It is absolutely phenomenal. They then split up and we get the scene that I absolutely love. We hear the sound of droidkas and I have not heard this sound for ages, but we hear them before we see them, which really paints them as a real threat to the group. Cody and Crosshair take them out by using shock detonators and some kind of grenade. Uh, they stick one onto a droid and Crosshair fires it, it blows it up and it falls slowly through the force field of a droid and it blows up. They're insane. It's just, <laughs> it's absolutely crazy how they think of these little sequences. I love it. So are they about to get what they came here for? Or are they not? Tactical droid then sends commando droids to attack the Empire. And they try to get them on a spiral staircase, but Crosshair uses a mirror puck onto the wall and picks them off one by one. An amazing ability shown by an enhanced clone. Crosshair, he is a monster with that sniper rifle, and I would not like to 1v1 in on Rust anytime soon. He then says to get the tactical droid, he needs one line of sight, and Cody runs upstairs and throws one of the mirror pucks. While in midair, let me get this, while in midair, he fires, takes out two droids, and takes out the tactical droid with headshots. What the? Honestly, one of the best action shots in the Bad Batch series ever. Freaking love this. Ames then has gotten in a hostage situation and Cody explains that he wants this to be peaceful and asks her to release Grotten. She replies with peace was an option before the Empire and Cody lowers his blaster and says peace is an option now. We have lived through two wars. Let's not live through another one. She releases Grotten but being the villain and coward he orders Cody to execute her. Before Cody can even make up his mind the sound of a blaster is heard and Ames drops to the ground camera pans up and it's crosshair he is standing there after taking the shot and he walks off as they are leaving the planet cody looks at the landing party and it's full of stormtroopers not clones i truly think this is near the end of the clones cody and crosshair then have a back and forth again in the same place as when at the start when crosshair was on his own and he says you know what the difference is between them and droids is that clones make their choices and they have to live with them and then cody just walks out of the shop. It's absolutely beautiful. The show ends with Crosshair back in his dorm but sitting down. You can see his black armor just on his table. He then goes into the cafeteria dressed in his black armor. It really stands out. He's trying to eat again which is one of the funny things that I like about this episode and guess what? He's called to Rampart's office where he is told to report to another commander and not Commander Cody. He says where's Cody to Rampart and he says he's gone AWOL. And that it's funny that all the clones around Crosshair keep disappearing. Crosshair walks out and you see him standing out against everyone in the hallway in his black armor. And that's the end. My favorite episode by far of this series. I really enjoyed every moment. 10 out of 10 show for me. But what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Looking forward to episode 4. It's going to be a slightly different format. I might have some reactions in there as well. But for now guys, keep geeking out. And I will see you in the next one.